So tell me about the men in your crew. The what? The men on your crew. Tell me about your crew members. Oh, my crew. We had 11 men on our crew. And uh, when we were training in Clovis, New Mexico, one of them, went, when we got ready to go overseas, he was afraid to go. And so he went, they call it a delaying route that we went, he gave us a five day pass or ten, I don't know how many days we got now, I can't remember. But he never showed up at uh, Lincoln, Nebraska to uh, depart for Tinian. Well, he didn't show up there, so he went AWOL. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to get over there and get killed. We got over there and we had a guy named Willard Bohan was one of our crew members. He was always kind of a scared to death. And uh, we got into a storm coming back from Osaka, Japan. And it was a pretty violent storm. And uh, he had a panic attack. And I really thought he was going to die back there. And uh, when we got to, we landed at Iwo Jima because we couldn't get on into Tinian. And I had him up on the wing, filling the, his fuel. He had was to fill the left tanks, two tanks on the left side. That was his job. Had him up there filling tanks. And somebody came up from down over under the hill where the mess hall was and said, we have dinner ready for you guys. You should come on down. Well, he just threw the hose down and put the lids back on the tank, the caps back on, climbed down. He almost run getting it all done. Well, I didn't know that he did fill the tanks. I thought he'd fill the tanks. So I stopped about, about five hours from Iwo Jima to Tinian, but we did actually need the fuel because we had to make an extra takeoff. And it takes quite a bit of fuel to get off the ground and get back up altitude. And so I run the fuel gauges after we take off. And the number one, number two yeah, didn't so have any gasoline in them. Yeah, the tank had very little. It had some, but it wouldn't have been running. So I just went ahead and transferred fuel out of the three and four tanks for the on the right hand side to the left hand side, and transferred fuel back over to them. And we had enough fuel to get on back into ten in without going back to Ewo. Well, well, when we got back to Tinian, Joe called him down at the office, and uh, he wouldn't let him fly anymore. Mm -hmm. well, he wouldn't have flown anyway, he was scared to death. Mm -hmm. Well, he took his stripes away from him, made him a private. Joe felt sorry for him, that's the airplane commander. And about two months, he put gave him back to him. Mm. I saw. I've seen him a couple times since we got out of discharge. Mm -hmm. He's from Pittsburgh, Kansas. I don't know what ever happened to him, but I think he had moved to the West Coast. You guys have a writing mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Last time I heard from a radio operator. He was in an extended care center, and I tried to call him about two weeks later. He didn't sound good when I talked to him for uh, the last time. Well, he, uh, his telephone had been disconnected, so I assumed that he died. What was his name? Uh, Charles Baldwin. Charles Baldwin. Now, who was your pilot and co-pilot? Uh -huh. What was your pilot's name? Joe Davidson. Joe Davidson. And he's dead. Do you have a co-pilot? Yeah. 
Leslie D. Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Leslie lives in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I talked to him about a couple months ago. He's a retired principal of an elementary school. Mm -hmm. And now he helps his kids. He put his, one of his kids in the printing business and he helps him, one of his children. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your position? Huh? What were you called? What was your position in the crew? My position? Mm -hmm. I was a flight engineer. Right. I was third in command.